Hi, my name is Mike Goddard. I'm a field engineer in the enablement group at Pivotal. And I wanted to run through a tutorial slash uh, demo. And uh, uh, what we're going to try to do is uh, ingest some Avro data into Greenplum database using external web tables. But first, I wanted to just walk through where we get set up with the, the virtual machine that I'm going to use. It's called the Sandbox VM. And you can access it here at greenplum.org and clicking on the center blue link there. And I have VMware, so I'm going to click on the VMware one. I've already joined, so I'm a member. So I'm just going to click sign in. If, if you're not already a member, go ahead and join. So we'll sign in. I've got everything pre-populated, which is convenient uh, for me. And so I'm going to go down here to the virtual machines. And I'm going to click this one here for VMware. Uh, so that's going to give me this zip file that I will download. Now conveniently, I've already downloaded that file. So I am going to open a window into my downloads. And let's see here if I can find where that file is. There it is. So I'm going to double click that zip file. So that should unzip pretty quick because uh, zip uh, decompresses fairly rapidly. So once this opens up, I'm just going to navigate into that uh, uncompressed folder. And I see something here that has an icon that looks kind of like VMware. So I'm going to double click that and see what happens. So that's going to fire up. VMware. I'm going to look at my settings. I'm going to give it two cores and I'll give it two gigabytes of RAM because I'm not going to use everything that it has bundled in there. Uh, I'm going to say to share with my Mac uh, on the networking and that's pretty much all I need to really adjust. So that thing is going to boot up, and that'll be fairly quick. So the reason I want to do this is uh, one of our partners has something. It's called a security uh, analytics uh, warehouse, and it was running on Hadoop. And they wanted to see if it would be feasible to, to move it over to Greenplum database. And the reason there is really in the Hadoop uh, environment, they're primarily using Hive and they're really running SQL queries. And the other thing that to me made it tempting to consider for Greenplum is that a lot of their input files are, are quite small. They're, you know, four kilobytes or a few hundred kilobytes and so no, nothing really large. Uh, and the HDFS, the Hadoop distributed file system, really prefers uh, very large files. So uh, small files are not really at sweet spot. So we thought we'd give this a shot. So I can see that my IP address is 172.16.131.141. So what I'm going to do is be tricky here. I'll try to edit my Etsy host file and make it match up with that address. That's 141. Okay. We had a previous version of this there. And I'm going to keep the old. Okay, now that I have that VM booted up. I edited my Etsy host file. I can easily SSH into that just using that hostname sandbox. So we can type. We'll SSH in. So we're there. And the first thing I'm going to do is, I guess, look at what files are there. 
not too many. Go ahead and start the database. So I'm the GP admin user. That's the DBA account for the Greenplum database cluster, and I can start it up. It's just a single virtual machine, one host running the master and the segment processes. So it has a total of two segments, which is fine for just experimenting. And actually, you can do a lot of functional testing on such a, an installation. It's, it's a great tool to have available. So there is a demo database already. And there is a user I've created already called demo. And uh, one thing I'm going to do here is use uh, this tool, DB Visualizer. It's a Java-based SQL client that just uses JDBC to connect because uh, it's kind of pretty. So let me look in the public uh, schema. I'm going to be lazy and put everything in there. And there will be tables there when, once we get this demo going here. So the next thing I'm going to do is type this backslash Q to quit my psql client. OK, I'm going to pull down a demo that I put out on S3. Uh, let's grab this. And so this is a project that I'm kind of building out on GitHub. And it's this demo uh, of you know, working with these Avro files that come into this security analytics warehouse <clears throat> from these devices uh, out on the edge on these networks that um, store log files and they, they get network traffic and, and store that for a short time. And then this gets pushed into this centralized warehouse over uh, secure FTP. And the files are all, uh, or all the different devices uh, data gets normalized into the single Avro uh, format, Avro schema. So I've got a series of steps here where uh, we did number one. Uh, now we're going to create a heap table. And then we're going to load it by using an external table. And then we're going to run a sample query. So let's go through those steps here. So number one is we are going to create a table called Avro Data. It's got about 62 columns, and these were all just derived uh, from the Avro schema. The Avro file has a header that basically contains the schema, and you can use that to generate uh, this DDO, which is what I did. So we're going to make it append only, and we're going to compress it. I'm going to just distribute it randomly here because I so far, I didn't determine the best way to, to distribute this uh, table. So I'm actually going to make one change here. Actually, no, I won't. Let me just grab all that text. And I will just run that directly over here in my SQL client. Okay, so let's see what we got. Here's our table, and here's our column. So, okay, great. So, the next step is to create an external table. Okay, so in line two, we create an external web table called Avro EXT. It's like uh, Avro data. The table we just created. And we're going to execute some commands in a pipe. So we're going to execute this Avro cat file. It's from that Avro C project from Apache. And the input's going to be just that <coughs> single Avro file. We're going to throw away anything from standard error because that, that'll get in the way of the external table process. We're going to pipe that to this Python script which is going to reformat that data in a way that the database can consume it easily. 
We're only going to run one process of this on the master because it's just a single node VM. <clears throat> In a truly distributed cluster, you'd approach this differently and probably run this uh, once on every second host. We're going to tell it the format is just text. Uh, we're going to use a tilde as the delimiter between the columns. And we're going to say that null is just uh, an empty column. Uh, because we have to create an external table as uh, GP admin, the DBA user, we're going to grant select privileges on that to the demo user, which is the user I'm connecting remotely uh, using that uh, DB Visualizer client. So let's go ahead and run this one. Okay, so now we have our external table. So in order to load the data, <coughs> all we do is we do two steps. And I'll copy that, and I will do that from the client here. So let's just get rid of that. And we will say So here's how we load using an external table. We just do a, an insert into our, uh, actually this is, I, I misspoke. I, I said this was a heap table. It's not, I want to clarify that. This is an uh, append optimized table. So we are inserting into our append optimized table the result of the select from the external table. This is a typical loading idiom for Greenplum. Now we are going to do something that's a very good practice. Every time you do a load, it's good to do, analyze the table. So our analyze finished. Um, I should probably refresh this objects tree so we can see both the append only table, Avro data, and the external table. So let's now go back here <clears throat> and the final step in my demo is we are going to just do a query here. Um, so we're going to select the source IP address and the destination IP address and then the sum of the payload, so the bytes that were transferred uh, between those uh, connections. Uh, from that table. We're going to group it by the IP source and IP dest uh, columns, and then we're going to order it descending by the sum, and we're going to take the just the top 20. So uh, you, you don't get a very good sense of how much time this would take in a large cluster on a large data set, but here on a single node VM, uh, I guess it's worth noting, we, it takes about uh, a half second. <clears throat> There's not any latency that you would typically have if you were uh, going to do a Hive query. You know, so if you recall the way Hive runs, it takes your SQL query, actually Hive query language, HQL, it's kind of a variant of SQL, and it compiles that into MapReduce jobs. Uh, and it takes a little while to spin that up and run it. So if you want truly interactive results that you get in you know, lower latency short times, uh, this approach with Greenplum database completely avoids anything to do with MapReduce. And you, know, you can find that to be very attractive because it's highly interactive. So here are our results. Um, the interesting thing, if you look at these uh, data types. <clears throat> These are IPv4 addresses. So an additional benefit uh, that you would get by choosing Greenplum for this task is, um, well, there's a, several of them actually. Um, this, is, this is just one of them. Uh, this is a GitHub <clears throat> repository for an IP 
4R, so an IPv4 range data type, which we can run in Greenplum. And so in addition to the built-in data types for INET and CIDR, which are both for network addresses, we can also use this IP4 range, um, which will actually be really useful to these folks when they're doing analysis uh, involving all this network data. So that's a huge benefit for them coming from uh, something like Hive. Um, in addition, if there's any kind of spatial information there, Greenplum database supports PostGIS, so they've also got the ability to do spatial analysis if, if that happens to be an aspect of, of their analytics. So uh, all in all, it should be a big win for them.